and in this video I will share all you need to know about the citizenship ceremony and how I got my blue passport. If you stick to the end of the video, I will share with you the full timeline of how long it took me to get my Canadian citizenship. Let's go! So I'm getting ready for my citizenship ceremony. They still do it online, virtually. When your citizenship ceremony is scheduled, you will get your email confirmation with the date and details you need to know to prepare for it. Just so you know, there is an option to request having the ceremony in person. You can simply reply to the address they provide in the letter to request an in-person ceremony, but you will have to wait a few weeks more for it to be arranged. I didn't want to wait longer as I'm in between moving to a new house, changing addresses, and I also have a vacation scheduled, so I decided to have my ceremony sooner than later, even though it will probably lack the grand feeling of the in-person celebration. If my circumstances were different, I would totally opt for a few extra weeks to have the ceremony in person. Regardless, I still dressed nicely, practiced saying my oath, and learned the anthem. It's okay if you don't know it by heart, you can simply read it off your screen, or a piece of paper if your ceremony is in person. So let's use the magic of cinema cut and jump straight to my ceremony. The ceremony lasts for two hours and starts with you confirming your identity in front of the officer and cutting your PR card. Yes, you destroy your PR card live because you are no longer a permanent resident, you are about to become a citizen. It's an exciting, though a weird moment when you are no longer PR and yet not a citizen, just like in that Britney Spears song. Anyways, don't forget to bring your PR card and scissors to the ceremony. In my case, there were about 300 people present on the ceremony. The crowd for an in-person ceremony would be smaller, so after cutting my PR card, I had to simply sit and wait till all of the participants were finished doing the same procedure. This citizenship ceremony is now in session. The official part consists of an introduction to your judge and then goes a short video showing you how beautiful Canada is and it reminds participants why they want to be the citizens of Canada. This short video also emphasizes that Canadian citizenship is both a privilege and a responsibility. Being a Canadian means standing up and saying, I'm ready to make a difference, to help others, to respect others and to work with my neighbors to build a better city, province and country. The future of Canada depends on all of us, together. After this video, the judge officially welcomed us to the ceremony and gave a beautiful speech reinforcing the importance of honoring Canadian history, culture and diversity. This was the moment when the ceremony started feeling much more real and honestly, that's where I started getting a little emotional. This was finally happening after so many years of hard work, sweat and tears. When it came to saying the oath, it was written on the screen and I just read it out loud along with everybody else and everyone was unmuted. So it was the whole chorus of different voices with different accents pledging allegiance to the King Charles. His heirs and successors. His heirs and successors. It was an interesting experience saying the oath along with hundreds of other people via Zoom call. The ceremony ended with congratulatory speech from officials and the judge and then we sang the Canadian anthem. Once again, it was all together with all participants. But for this part, you can stay muted if your singing skills are questionable. The entire ceremony was held in English language, since the ceremony was held in Ontario. It was just the anthem that was bilingual, so we sang the second verse in French. If you are in a francophone province, you can of course request to have a fully bilingual or French ceremony by contacting IRCC. The last step in an online ceremony was to sign the confirmation of citizenship paper and send the signed document to my assigned IRCC officer via email. You can either sign the physical printed version of the document 
or sign it electronically. This document can be found in the end of your ceremony invitation letter, so make sure to read the entire email when you receive it. If you have questions regarding online ceremony, there is 99% chance your question is covered in that letter so don't skip reading it. This last step of signing the document is so simple, so make sure you don't forget to do it as soon as the ceremony is over. Otherwise, you will not get your certificate of citizenship. The certificate of citizenship will be your first and the most original proof of your Canadian citizenship. This is the document not to be taken lightly. You will also need it in order to apply for your Canadian passport. How are you feeling? Uh, relieved. <laughs> Joyful, definitely. I'm very glad that after all these years I'm finally a Canadian citizen. But I feel like it'll really hit me once I get my blue passport. Let's have a look. I think this is it. Congratulations! This is the Certificate of Canadian Citizenship. It arrived just in 10 days. Now, with the Citizenship Certificate in hand, it's time to apply for the passport. And there are several options to apply, in person or by mail. And for either of these options, you can choose how soon you need your passport. By the end of the next business day, two to nine business days, 10 to 20 business days. Now, if you're thinking, I can get it tomorrow, let me stop you here. You will need to provide proof on why you need it so soon. For example, a plane ticket and an explanation letter describing the need for such an urgency. They would also insist that you do not finalize any travel prior to having your passport, since there could always be unforeseen delays. There will also be an additional fee for urgent services. In my case, I went with 10 to 20 business days option. Now, if you would like to apply by mail, you will send all your documents by snail mail. Personally, I don't fully trust mail, it gets lost, delayed, so I decided to apply in person. For the in-person application, I booked an appointment at the passport office. You can always do a walk-in, but then be prepared for a long line and hours of waiting. Unfortunately for me, the closest spot available was in a couple of weeks or so. I still think it's better than going to the passport office without an appointment and just waiting in the line. So my suggestion for you here is to start booking your slot after your citizenship ceremony, even before you get your certificate. So by the time you get your certificate, it's time to go to the passport office. Now about the documents. For my appointment, I filled out the application form, got two pictures of my beautiful face, found two references for the application form and one guarantor to sign both the pictures and the application form. One piece of ID and the citizenship certificate should be included in the application package too. Your references are essentially people who know you and can confirm that you are you. So when the day came, I just went to the passport office with all of the documents and a credit card to pay fees, and I did my application in May 2023, and it cost me 160 Canadian dollars. The lady accepting my application told me that I would receive the passport in my mail within 10 business days. In reality, I received a notice in my mailbox saying that I need to come to the post office and collect the envelope and sign for it. So after I came back from my vacation in Vancouver, I went straight to collect the passport. And yes, there will be a new video about Vancouver soon, so stay tuned. You know what happens next? With the magic of cinema cut, we can jump to two weeks later and get the passport. And the journey is over. <laughs> and that's it. Here it is. If you are confused about the whole timeline, let me show it to you. So the whole process from applying to Canadian citizenship to receiving the passport took me 13 months and 11 days. If you are like me and you like keeping track of your progress, there is a nice tool I'd like to recommend. It's called ImiTracker. Some of you probably already heard of it. You can track many things there your visa progress, your citizenship application, and so on. And if I look further back, it took me six years from applying to Canadian PR through express entry to get in my Canadian passport. And looking even further back, it took me more than seven years from the moment I started thinking about moving to Canada and preparing all the documents to the moment when I hold my Canadian passport in my hands. Was it worth it? Absolutely. What's next? 
traveling and exploring, of course. When I got my Canadian citizenship, I was given an opportunity to sign in to Canoe app, which provides one year of free access to Canadian parks, museums, and other places of interest. So don't forget to use this perk when you get your citizenship. I can also travel around the world and make a comparison videos about Canada and different countries. What do you think? What country should I visit next? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for being with me throughout this journey and thank you for watching this video. Together we experienced this big and significant milestone and I will remember it forever. If you enjoyed my story, please click the like button below and subscribe to this channel. A huge shout out to our Patreon supporters and I will see you in the next video.